Hello everyone and welcome back to Love English. I'm Sabra and today we're going to be looking at how you can massively boost your vocabulary by reading and listening to the news in English. News vocabulary is like a specific genre of vocabulary. There are certain words which we will often see in the papers. So today I'm going to teach you a lot of the common vocabulary that comes up in news articles and also in news reports on the television, things like that. So that you'll easily be able to follow the news, read the news, and this is a great way to boost your vocabulary as you can learn so much from listening and reading the news in English. Also, I have a rather interesting homework challenge for you, so make sure you check that out at the end. Don't forget guys, you can find out more about us on our website, follow us on social media, and also you can check out our courses. So, phrase number one is to clap back. Now this is quite a new phrase, I would say, this is a new phrasal verb, but it does come up a lot in the news, particularly in celebrity gossip columns, any sort of Buzzfeed type articles. To clap back is like saying to retaliate or to retort. It's like to respond, to reply in a defensive manner. So for example, if you did see that rather dramatic scene of Will Smith clocking uh, Chris Rock in the face um, over that rather controversial comment he made about his wife at the Oscars, you could say something like this. The charity organisation for alopecia have clapped back in Will Smith's defence, claiming that alopecia is a debilitating disease and saying that Will Smith was simply reacting emotionally. So there it's like saying they've responded, they've retorted, to clap back. Phrasal verb number two is to stamp out, to stamp something out. And basically this means that you're trying to stop something completely. If you think about stamping, when you stamp, you um, very heavily put your feet on the ground. Like you would stamp out a fire, you try to remove it. So if you read that something is being stamped out or police are trying to stamp it out, they mean they want to completely stop this activity. For example, we could say, police are trying to stamp out illegal sales of exotic animals. Number three is to crack down. And normally we say crack down on. Again, this is something you'll hear a lot with police and government. This is where the police or the government or any organisation is trying to more strictly control um, something illegal or something, a bad habit, something like that, usually something illegal. So we might hear police are cracking down on drug dealers. For example, that would mean they are giving them more severe punishments, they're putting them in jail for longer, um, they perhaps are arresting people more regularly. So you might even hear something like, teachers at the school are cracking down on the use of mobile phones during class time. The next one is to seek out. And this means to look for, but it's perhaps a more formal, more newspaper speak for to look for. The inference with seek out is also that something has been found. So it's a little different from look for in that sense. It's like, I've looked for it and found it. So you might say, parents sought out the best medical care to deal with their daughter's rare condition. Or businesses are seeking out better measures to control carbon emissions. Number five is to gloss over, to gloss over. Usually we say to gloss over something. And this means to mention something briefly, to try to very quickly go over it, to try to not dwell on it, meaning to try not to spend much time on it. So usually people gloss over things that are uncomfortable for them to speak about or um, are something which they maybe are embarrassed about, um, that they don't know about. So sometimes when politicians are being interviewed, if there are some figures or some questions which maybe they don't know the answer to or maybe they don't want to answer, they can try and gloss over those questions, gloss over that subject. When the Prime Minister was interviewed on the BBC, he glossed over questions relating to the current investigation, which is looking into breaches of conduct during the lockdown. Now, number six is quite similar, but it's a little bit more light-hearted. This one is to laugh off, to laugh something off. And this is where you try to make a joke or laugh about something which is slightly unpleasant. So you try to gloss over it by making a joke, having a laugh and being like, it's nothing, you know, trying to quickly skip over it with humour. So you might hear, 
the actor laughed off suggestions that his career might be over after he criticised the Academy so openly. Or we might say, she's in trouble with the boss at the moment, but when we asked her about it, she just laughed it off. Number seven is to dredge something up, to dredge something up. And this means to pull things up from the past, often the distant past. So to drag that to the present moment. So sometimes um, people do this when, for example, a politician is campaigning to go further, maybe campaigning to become head of the party, prime minister, president, and the opposition or journalists who are against him will dredge up bad things he did in the past. So for example, with um, David Cameron, uh, when he was campaigning to be prime minister in England, the press dredged up lots of things that he did that were bad during his university year. There was things like that he smoked marijuana, that he did something really unpleasant with a pig, very horrible things. And they dredged that up to try to um, smear his name, to try to make um, him look much less um, like a good candidate, basically. Also, people in arguments sometimes dredge things up from the past. I know that women can be worse at this than men. We might suddenly say, yeah, but remember 10 years ago when you didn't pay for that lunch for me? Or remember 15 years ago when you were rude to me at that party? And the guy is like, what? I can't even remember that. We remember. <laughs> so sometimes women are more likely well, not all women, but it can be the case that women dredge things up a bit more. And of course, sometimes men do this too. The next one is to tone something down, to tone something down. And this is where we make something less harsh, less extreme, less aggressive. So for example, if um, somebody says, mm, I think we need to tone down um, the formality in this letter, or I think we need to tone down um, how aggressive this um, letter comes across. So it's basically like take something down a little bit in the level of intensity. You can also um, talk about toning down colours, of course, that's the more literal meaning. Um, but we use this a lot from the point of view of um, the tones of articles, the tones of the press. So you might read something like, some newspapers are toning down the anti-government rhetoric. Or you might read something like, Prince Harry has been asked to tone down his open criticisms of the royal family. The next one is to stir up, to stir up. Now, this one is probably quite easy to understand because if you imagine stirring a pot, so this is like when you um, cause trouble or you create bad feeling, you create problems. You're stirring it up, you're making the pot bubble more. You're like, I suppose, like the witches would stir their cauldron. So you're creating bad feeling. Um, and often it's something that perhaps actually had gone calm or had become um, a much better situation, a more stable situation. But then we say it's been stirred up again. So you might read, Donald Trump supporters have been stirring up trouble again by protesting outside the White House. Next one, probably this one you're familiar with. This one is to cover something up. And we can call something a cover up. It's quite self-explanatory, this one, in that it means to cover something, to try to not have it exposed to the public. So if police make mistakes during an investigation and don't, are not honest about this, don't tell the public or um, don't tell the government, then they've covered it up. And we talk about cover-ups. We might say there was a cover-up for the problems in the health industry during 1998, for example. The next one is something blows over. And this means that something passes, that something um, stops being important, stops being something that people talk about. Usually it's a problem or a scandal. And it's where there's a lot of attention on that particular thing. There's a frenzy around it. Lots is published about it. But eventually these things blow over. People forget. It fades in people's memories. So even in school, when there's dramas at school, problems at school, people might say to their children, don't worry, this situation is going to blow over. This embarrassing moment that you had, people will forget it, it will blow over. Like a storm, eventually the wind sort of blows the storm away. It's the same kind of thing. Arguments can blow over, feuds can blow over, scandals can blow over. The next one is call for. Something calls for something. And this means to say that something is necessary to ask for it, Basically, this means that something is required. They're asking for it, requesting it, because it's necessary. 
so you might hear the public are calling for more help from the government with the rising cost of living. Now that we've done the phrasal verbs, we'll now be looking at the verbs that are often used in news articles, in news reports, and these are used to make something seem more dramatic. The first one is to slash something, to slash, and this is another way to say to cut. To slash is actually a, quite a dramatic cutting, so if you, if you slash your arm, you would cut it a lot. If you slash, um, for example, slash back a large plant in your garden or a tree, you really will do it in quite a dramatic and aggressive manner. So if you read that prices have been slashed or jobs have been slashed, this means that they have been cut down, reduced, dramatically. The next one is to strike. Again, it's a very dramatic verb. If something strikes, it means it hits, and it hits in quite a hard way. So you won't read that um, an earthquake happened. You'll usually read that an earthquake struck. So you might say, the earthquake struck the small island at around 11 p.m. last night. Or you might read, disaster struck when a boat sank in the Pacific Ocean. Something like this, so it's when we say something has hit, so it's a more dramatic way really of saying that something has happened, an event has, has hit the earth in a sense. Now you can also use strike as a noun, and you'll read this in the news as well. So a strike is where people decide not to go into work all together, so usually it's a large group of people, most people are needed in order for this to have an impact. So it's a large group of people who say, I'm not coming to work today because wages are too low or conditions are unacceptable. And in the past, um, people used to strike more often in England to protest against things like um, the conditions for minors or wages, things like that. Do some workers still strike in your country? What kind of things do they strike about? The next one is to escalate, to escalate. And this is when something is made worse. Tensions increase, something becomes worse, basically, goes up to the next level. An escalator, of course, takes you up. So if something escalates, it, it becomes usually worse. So you might say, tensions between the two countries have escalated since the Prime Minister of Country X openly criticised Country Y. The next one is a bit of a lighter one. Some of the previous ones were rather more serious, but this one is to plug something. If you plug something, you promote it. So actors, um, musicians, anybody who has a product that they, they want to promote, advertisers will plug particular things. So you might say, Leonardo DiCaprio in the Hollywood Reporter interview was plugging his new film out on Netflix. The next one is to spot. Now, the news doesn't just say that they saw somebody or somebody was seen, they will always say they were spotted, which gives it a bit more of a dramatic edge because if you spot something, it's more difficult. So we often talk about spotting wildlife. So you might say, this particular actress was spotted in the supermarket and she's wearing an engagement ring. You know, they'll say this kind of thing to make it more dramatic. The next one is plummeted, which means gone down dramatically. So again, you won't just read in the news that something has decreased or decreased dramatically, you'll read it's plummeted, which means it's really gone down a lot. So you might read, retail profits have plummeted during the COVID pandemic when all the shops were shut. So the opposite of this is, of course, rocketed. If something rockets, it goes up like a rocket, it goes up dramatically. So this is a bit more positive, you might read, profits have rocketed, the share value of company X has rocketed, uh, viewing numbers for a particular TV program have rocketed, so I know that the popularity of the show Bridgerton meant that viewers on Netflix rocketed for a period, so it just means go up dramatically. If you haven't seen Bridgerton and you're a girl, you must see it, I absolutely recommend it. I'm plugging it here now, brilliant show. Moving on from verbs to noun phrases that are very common in the news. The first one is a bust up and this is an argument, a, a feud, you know, some sort of serious conflict. So again, to come back to it as an example, Will Smith, Chris Rock, that could be described as a bust up. Also, I don't know if you remember when uh, Kanye West criticized Taylor Smith when she got um, an award at an award ceremony, and that caused a big bust up between Taylor Smith and Kanye West, and for a long time over social media, that bust up was quite public. 
if the bust up becomes very serious and people no longer speak, and this can happen in families as well, in relationships, um, we talk about a rift, which means a very serious separation. So no communication usually between those people. So you might say, um, when he chose to marry somebody that his parents really disapproved of, it caused a, a family rift, meaning a breaking apart of the family where they're not speaking during that particular time. The next one is a raft of. You'll read this a lot in the press as well because it means a large group of. So for example, you might hear there's been a raft of redundancies or there's been a raft of people striking at company X. So it's a large group of people doing something basically. The next one is the fallout. And this means the aftermath of a particular event, a serious event with negative consequences. So it's the unpleasant consequences, the unpleasant effects of an event basically. So you might say, well, the fallout for COVID has been that many governments are going to be paying off the debt for years and years to come. The next one is the media circus. And let's face it, the media can often be like a circus. This is a metaphor for the craziness surrounding particular events or people. The reporters, the photographers, the journalists, the social media influencers who all arrive somewhere and are shouting and writing things down and cameras flashing. And of course, then you have the performers or the politicians who can play up to that, who respond to that, who might overact. So this is all referred to as a circus, the media circus. The next one is something hits the headlines. Now we very often say this phrase to make something seem more dramatic. So we might hear something like, it's recently hit the headlines that Donald Trump is saying he's going to run again for president. And it means it's arrived in the headlines, but this is obviously a more dramatic way to say it. Another dramatic phrase you might hear is something is splashed across the headlines. And splashed, of course, uh, tends to suggest that something was very big, that it made a lot of um, noise, there was a lot of activity. So if we say it was splashed across the headlines, usually this suggests that it was big, that it was dramatic. So it's another way to make something seem more exciting. The last one is the buzz around something, the buzz. And this is a lot more positive. The buzz is like excitement, um, a feeling of activity, positivity around an event. So you might say, for example, there's a lot of buzz about um, this new restaurant that's opening in town. There's been a lot of buzz around that. Or there's been Oscar buzz around that particular film. It's excitement and positivity. Right, everyone, that's all we have time for today. But I would like you to do this little piece of homework. It's a homework challenge that I have for you. I would like you to write a very short newspaper article on one of the following topics. You can leave it as a comment and I promise that I will check it for you. I will let you know if you used this vocabulary effectively. Try to use at least three pieces of the vocabulary in this video. It's a great chance to also practice your writing. I look forward very much to reading those guys and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.